let me be very honest with you guys. I am the only person out there, the only social media influencer who has told you the truth about what happens behind the scenes when the car reviews are created for you to watch and how much of lying and bribing that's going on behind the scenes. I've showed you the footage, I've showed you the emails, and I have paid quite a price for it. Most of the automakers have banned me from their media events. Um, a lot of sponsors have left because they realize that I'm exposing the industry. So, but I know why no one else wanted to do it because I'm the only one who could actually afford it because I run my own channel and um, I have other sources of income. So I could lose all, all of these revenues and still be true to my audience and expose the industry for what it is. I've put together three videos and all of them have very unique footage that you've never seen before and probably won't see again. I don't see anybody else doing it. And I will show you guys all uh, right now, back to back. Um, pay attention, because like I said, you will never look at car reviews the same ever again. Uh, and, and, and hopefully this will help you make better decisions about the cars that you will be buying in the future. Now, before that, I just have to take a moment to let you know that this video is brought to you by Energy Pal. Are you thinking about going solar but not sure what panels to get, whether or not to get a home battery, or how much all of this is going to cost? Well, Energy Pal will do all of that for you and you will get a $500 gift card when your installation is complete if you use the link in the description of this video. All right, with that out of the way, let me show you the first video that I've made, which is literally exactly about how car makers buy and bribe us, the influencers. Uh, here we go. This is what happens when a car influencer gets a free first class trip being wined and dined by an automaker right before he does a review of one of their cars. Do you think he will be fair in his reviews knowing any criticism may have him never again getting invited to these luxury vacations? I mean, um, media trips. Well, I have been fair and critical when needed in my reviews and many brands like Volkswagen, GM, Rivian, Lucid, Porsche, and many others have banned me from their future vacations. I mean, media trips. Yes, someone write that down for me. I will even show you one of the emails from Volkswagen bluntly admitting that. So can you trust car reviews from the popular influencers and car publications that are regularly accepting these trips, not only because they are better than any vacation that you have ever been to, but are also essential for their content. Today, I am going to show you what happens behind the camera on those trips and how most car brands like Volkswagen and Rivian essentially bribe reviewers and journalists to make sure that you don't accidentally notice anything too negative about their new car. Now, I should tell you that not all brands ban journalists for bad reviews. There are still some brands that haven't banned me, despite my honest reporting, like Nissan, Vinfast, Tog, and Xpong Motors. So kudos to them letting me enjoy these trips without any fear of retaliation for my honest opinion. All right now, gather around, boys and girls, and let me tell you what happens when an influencer gets a media event invite. It all starts with an invitation to go to a really cool location, sometimes within the country, like Los Angeles, New York, or Vegas, but many times abroad. Europe, Asia, and Middle East, uh, the part that's not on fire. Your airfare and your hotel are booked in advance, and many times you get to bring a camera person or a production assistant with you. However, I have seen many journalists just bring their spouses or partners, which I guess are assistants too? 
I have also seen those people completely ditch the media events and even media dinners and just bluntly make it a family vacation. Many times your trip to the airport in a car of your choice is paid for as well and when you arrive at the airport you get to fast track your way through business class queue and get to a luxury all-inclusive lounge with unlimited food, drinks, open bar, showers and even your own massage chair. All of that while most of you are miserably curled up in metal airport chairs at the crowded gates. Then you get on a plane before everyone else, except for people with kids, which never made sense to me. Why? Why do kids need to be the first ones on the plane? Do, do, do they need some extra time to prep themselves to cry and hit my chair for the next 12 hours? And the business class experience is great. You get your own space that becomes a bed with a big screen TV, your set of slippers and toothbrushes and all kinds of goodies. You get a five course meal and unlimited drinks and snack throughout the entire flight. It is amazeballs. Finally, you get to the exotic destination of the brand's choice and oh boy, most of the time you are in for an amazing week. You get to your destination and someone is meeting you at the exit with one of those signs with your name on it, takes your luggage and brings you to a chauffeured car to drive you to the hotel. And the hotel is usually top of the line. It's got some gifts and snacks waiting for you in the room. A lot of times it has a spectacular view and everything Thing you want uh, like room service and many times hotel restaurants and services including massages are paid for as well then over the next few days or a week you are invited to all kinds of fancy events media dinners test drives with access to the newly unveiled cars factory tours, entertainment unveilings, and you get the press passes to the auto show if the brand's events are part of it, which many times they are. Sometimes you are treated to unforgettable life experiences like this one, where an entire attraction park on a private island was shut down just for about 20 of us and a full show was performed in which we were even allowed to participate. That was awesome. But I can't stress enough that the majority of journalists and influencers are not just having a great time, which absolutely they are, they are also 100% rely on the content that they get during those trips. This is the only way you get early access to these cars, in many cases ahead of time, so when the news is released, you already have an article or a video ready to go. And then, once it's all over and you've gained, like, 10 pounds from all of the free food and drinks, uh, you are chauffeured back to the airport and the lounges, the first class, and all of that repeats itself one more time. And once you get home and remember that you actually have a job, you're in a bit of a pickle. Even though you're not told what to say or what to write by any of these brands, you are definitely going to be watched as you release your content. And even though not all brands will blacklist you from their future events for your criticism, most absolutely will. It's an unwritten rule, so to speak. Or in the case of Volkswagen, actually very much written. That's right, Volkswagen was actually blunt enough to flat out put that in writing that I will not be invited to future events because of my review of their Volkswagen ID Buzz. Now, in my defense, the Volkswagen ID Buzz blows. I did not like it. I thought it was a weak attempt at resurrecting an iconic vehicle with lazy design and engineering. Now, back to the bribes. I mean, uh, vacations. Uh, I, mean, I mean, media trips. Damn it. If I had to estimate the money spent on most of the trips that I have gone to, I would say they range anywhere from $5,000 to about $50,000 or above each. So you tell me, if you're going to be an honest journalist and have yourself cut off not only from these amazing trips, but also from the very content that you need to keep going, or, you know, say something like this uh, when it comes to a car that we all know is essentially a huge failure and an embarrassment to the EV manufacturing. This is the Honda E, and it might just be one of the most desirable electric cars. No, one of the most desirable cars, full stop, on the market right now.
Ah, nobody does it like fully charged. And don't get me wrong, I have consciously made my choice over and over again fully aware of the consequences. And that's why I don't have access to the cars that everyone else does and I don't have a million subscribers. But I do have one thing that they don't besides my awesome collection of pink shirts. And that is why I hope you watch my channel. All right, now if you thought that was bad, which it was, let me show you another video that I've made actually before the one that you just watched where I've kind of, I've concentrated on two things. So one, I show you some proof of how, um, you know, the, the car makers operate as far as, you know, who's allowed access to their cars in order to make the reviews. And secondly, I've concentrated on, you know, showing you uh, and going really after the biggest publications and specifically the biggest YouTube channel in the electric car space, the fully charged and exposing them for who they are which are liars who've simply shamelessly sold out. Let me tell you a secret. Car reviewers on YouTube and everywhere else are full of shit. You know how I know? I used to be one of them. I definitely think this is a really cool cat. Uh, definitely just excited. So this is one of those videos where you learn how to keep your house from being broken into from a professional burglar. That's me. But I have taken a different path and you can tell by the fact that I am no longer covering the automaker events mainly because they have banned me. That's right banned me from them because unfortunately my reviews were honest and they don't like that kind of uh, nonsense. Which brings me to the first type of a car review that you should not trust. There are a total of three and we'll get to the other two in a second, but this one is the most common and popular one and yet by far the worst. Now this is the type of a review that is done by an established automotive media from bigger channels like Motor Trend or Doug Dumura, all the way to smaller channels that are recognized by the car industry as micro influencers, like until very recently myself. I thought it was just as beautiful as this one, and I also am really. Okay. And these are the reviews of cars that get posted right about when a new model is released or even before that. Now think about it. How does one get a hold of a brand new car that is not on the market or even in production yet to be able to review it? Well, you have to be invited to a media drive by the brand. If you do have a decent following on social media within the automotive niche, you should be able to get into most of the media drives or be able to get a car for a couple of days to play around with. Now, the media drives. Oh, the media drives. These can be amazeballs. That's an industry term. You get flown out like an Instagram model by an 80-year-old billionaire. Business class, best hotels, catered meals, entertainment, gifts, exotic destinations. It is awesome. I, I think some of the trips I went to, I would estimate the brand to spend an equivalent of about, I don't know, $50,000 just on my channel to be there. So before I get to the obvious problem here, uh, there is only so much you can find out about a car if you have it from an hour to even a couple of days. It is just not really enough time to truly review it. And most media drives are all done within a very controlled environment with pre-selected routes and almost never include charging, which is an important part of reviewing an electric car. Now, let's get to the elephant in the room, which you probably think is the fact that these brands tell the journalists and influencers what to show and what not to show. But that's not actually true. It's actually a little bit worse than that. So let me tell you something that I am one of the very few journalists and influencers who is even in a position to tell you this. What does happen at the media drives and private events for influencers and journalists? Of course, they tell you all the awesome things about the car, avoid as many questions as possible about any shortcomings and then 
leave you the hell alone to do whatever type of a review you want to do. No, really. Uh, you can say anything you want about the car while going to town on the free buffet and an open bar they have paid for. However, if they don't like what you end up saying, well, you're just not going to be invited back. And some of them are pretty blunt about it. Here's what Volkswagen told me after I asked them why I wasn't invited to a media drive. Now, this was after I criticized their ID Buzz after its unveiling. As you can see, they had no problem telling me that a negative take on their car is what got me banned from the future invites. And that's in addition to saying that I wasn't kissing their team's ass enough for inviting me. Now, don't get me wrong, you still do see some mild criticism in some of the reviews, but it's nowhere near where it should be because almost all of the professional reviewers rely on being on good terms with the brands to be able to continue doing their job and have access to the early cars. Here's a great example of one of the biggest electric car YouTube channels fully charged raving about the Honda E after an exclusive access to its pre-production car. <laughs> this is very exciting. This is a really, really interesting new electric car. It's, the, it's really, really remarkable. Coming out very, very soon. That is very nice. <laughs> First of all, very nice? You mean the Honda e-acceleration, one of the worst EV 0-60 to 60 specs in the industry with over 8 seconds? And he knew it when he said it. As a matter of fact, anybody who knew anything about electric cars knew right away at that time that this was going to be one of the worst electric cars out there with only 111 EPA equivalent miles of range, which was half of what EVs coming to the market at that time were boosting, and yet with a huge $35,000 starting price for which you could get another EV with double of that range. This was such a huge disaster for Honda that they've only sold a few thousand of them in the first year and then even less than that in the following year. Now, did Fully Charge know all of this when they were making and releasing this video? I'm pretty sure they did, so why lie? Well, this is why. Guess who gets invited to another exclusive media drive event from Honda the next year? It's cute, it's retro, but it's built for the modern age. This is the Honda E, and it might just be one of the most desirable electric cars. No, one of the most desirable cars, full stop, on the market right now. Wow. Literally every single word that he said about that car was bullshit and he knew it. Because by then, they knew the pathetic specs for that car and even more pathetic sales, and yet... One of the most desirable cars, full stop, on the market right now. And as I was just about to film this video, and I kid you not, uh, fully charged, just uploaded another exclusive preview of, well, you get the picture now, right? Now, let's talk about the other two types of the reviews real quick. The second one is any Tesla review. It is usually done by a Tesla fan or a Tesla investor, and you will pretty much never get the honest review. And the third one is from those who did not get their cars from the automakers, but are owners of the cars themselves. And in that case, it's kind of like asking if Johnny is a good kid, if you're asking asking Johnny's parents. Apparently, he is. So why am I telling you this? Well, when I was reporting on electric cars when they were just coming out, all news were good news because they were mainly prototypes and hopes and dreams and those are always amazing. But then those prototypes went into production and a lot of smaller startups went public where their priorities shifted from pleasing customers to pleasing investors and then there were a lot of issues to report. Most reporters have decided to keep their brand in coming and that's why you saw a lot of this. <laughs> this is very exciting. But I have decided to do something 
slightly different. It kind of looks like a Ford delivery van dressed up as a Volkswagen minibus for Halloween. So the bottom line is this. Instead of making a statement and creating an amazing electric vehicle as a returning legend, something that Ford did a pretty good job at with the Mustang Mach-E, Volkswagen has essentially put a minibus shell on top of the ID4 with very average specs that will be even more average and outdated by 2024 and called it a day. You weren't supposed to drag the ID buzz into the past, you were supposed to bring the past into the future. This is not how you compete with Tesla and other impressive competitors. Remember that email from Volkswagen essentially letting me know I was banned from their media events? This was the video they were talking about and I kid you not, it came out literally at the same time as I was having dinner with the Volkswagen team, including then the Volkswagen of America CEO, Scott Keogh. Now, some of you may not know this, but Volkswagen used to be a sponsor of this channel for about a year and a video like that and other videos of me criticizing the ID4 has lost me tens of thousands of dollars in more advertising income if I would just keep my mouth shut and say, I don't know, something like this. This is the new ID Buzz and it's the cure, my friends, the cure for the oversized yet somehow cramped, boring, samey, annoying SUV that have been clogging up our streets for too damn long. Another fine video from guess who? the fully charged. So next time you're watching a car video review, don't think about what the person in front of the camera is saying, but think about the nice fat catered dinner behind it. And they are delicious. I should know. All right, now we're still not done here because I'm gonna show you the last video, uh, which is very different because uh, this is the video that I did about all this negative publicity um, that all of these publications and influencers have created for, you know, one of the younger brands. Uh, but when I was doing my research about, you know, what was really wrong, I realized, well, you gotta, you gotta see this one. Can you trust car reviews? Well, earlier this year, I have exposed Volkswagen and other brands for bluntly banning critics like myself from their media drives to avoid criticism. And I showed you how big media outlets like Fully Charged lie to you in order to keep their early access to the cars and breaking news. Today, I will show you what happens when a group of popular car review publications decide to attack a new brand for the very things they have given a pass to other more well-connected brands. In this case, I'm talking about the new car maker that you may have never heard of, VinFast. You see, VinFast is new to the US market and it just got a ton of bad reviews earlier this year from a few big publications. That's not very common. So what really happened here? Well, let's go over them and then compare what they said about VinFast versus what they said about other brands when it came to the exact same shortcomings. Now, don't get me wrong, VinFast has plenty of things to fix and improve and it is crucial that they do. Let's start with the road and track that called VinFast's EPA range a problem, but when they reviewed the Honda E that has half of that range and yet not even close to half of the price, somehow said, oh well, it's not perfect, doesn't have the longest range, but what's more important is that it's a lovable hood. So 200 miles of range, bad. 100 miles of range? Oh look, how adorable, <laughs> what a cutie. Wait. What are we talking about? But the road and track did not stop the hypocrisy there. They have also claimed that the VinFast media car was unfinished. Now, that very well might have been the case, and again, that's on VinFast, but no car in the modern history was more unfinished and had the worst build quality for years than the Tesla Model S. Even Tesla's now biggest fanboy and former contributor to this channel, Sandy Monroe, said this in our conversation about Tesla's poor build quality and specifically the terrible paint shop at Tesla's Fremont factory. The reason that the paint quality is poor on the Tesla is because they got a really bad paint shop. And if it was up to me, 
during the COVID problem, I would have bulldozed that place and I'd have spent the half a billion dollars it takes to put in a really primo paint shop. Yes, per Sandy Monroe, and you can watch that video in its entirety, anything that came out, and in some cases still does come out of the Fremont, California factory, has build quality issues. I know because I was one of the first Tesla Model S customers back in 2012. The car was built out of cardboard, spit, and hope. So let's see what the road and track said about the unfinished and sloppy build quality of the Model S when they did a review of it. All right, here it is. Scrolling, scrolling, still nothing, huh? Oh, what's this? Oh, the article specifically mentions that there was nothing to complain about at all and that Tesla has produced a perfect car. Now, honestly, I don't even have time to list all of the articles and videos outlining all of the, um, um, what do you guys call it? Oh yeah, unfinished and embarrassing build quality of early Teslas with panel gaps, missing parts, falling off trim, fading paint, and a million of other build quality issues. But you didn't notice any of them. Not even over the years when you had a chance to update your article with the, and I don't mean to introduce new terms to your editorial staff, uh, facts. But Road and Track wasn't the only one to point out the build quality issues in the VF8. One of the biggest automotive publications, the Motor Trend, pointed them out as well. Well, surely they have pointed out exactly the same issues when they reviewed the Model S in 2013. Um, no? Nothing at all. Huh, weird. How about their 2014 review? Still nothing. Uh, 2015? 16, 17, 18? The green car reports didn't fare any better. Bitched and complained about the media car being unfinished, but in their review of the 2012 Tesla Model S, it literally says, we saw no major quality flaws. Huh, okay, I mean, not okay. Even Jalopnik, which usually is pretty fair at dishing out criticism, couldn't resist to take a shot at the VF8, but when I looked up their review of the Model S, they too said nothing about Tesla's horrendous build quality. There was also this report from Steven Ewing of Inside EVs who felt carsick during his media drive, and despite this sounding more like a personal old man problem, and I know because I have plenty of them, he has dedicated a good majority of the top prime space of his article to his tummy trouble before he even started the actual car review. Finally, Kyle Connor of out of spec said this about the $55,000 VF8. Again, for 55 grand, does it feel that premium? But when he drove the Tesla Model S Plaid for more than double of that price, he said this. It's not nearly as premium as some of the other cars, but do you really need it? Well, Kyle, if you don't need it in a $130,000 car, why would you need it in a... Uh, never mind. I am tired. But you do get the picture. These reviewers and publications are straight up take us for fools and there is nothing we can do about it. Or can we? By the way, I wasn't planning on making this video, but when VinFast has asked me to produce a sponsored series of videos together, which I was more than happy to do because I am a fan, I said, hey, you know sponsoring my channel is not going to buy my opinion, right? If we're going to move forward with this, we're going to have to address the elephant in the room, which is all of these bad reviews that are coming out. And they said, knock yourself out. So that's how I started to dig into what was behind all of it and now you see what I have discovered. And let me tell you, when a brand comes out with their first EV, it's always far from perfect, whether it's a Tesla or a Mercedes. And the media cars that are usually very early production cars are generally not very good. But Apparently, neither is the journalistic integrity of some people with access to them. Now, let's address a couple of things that I have yet to mention. First, you might be wondering, is it really fair to compare two reviews by two different reviewers of the same publication? I mean, they can have two different perspectives, right? Well, no. 
When it comes to bigger publications like Road and Track, Motor Trend, and others, each publication usually has their own set of moral and editorial standards, and they have multiple people, including the editor in chief, to make sure they are enforced. So, different writers may have different set of opinions, but not different set of facts or bias. It is also very much possible that Tesla or other brands have given the reviewer more polished media cars, and honestly, this is where VinFest dropped the bomb and should get better at it, but this is why these reviews should at some point be updated when the publication is able to get a hold of their own car, purchased or rented to conduct a true independent review, and yet they don't. So should you trust car reviews? Now, the short answer is no. However, I would suggest do what I do when I'm trying to research a new car, new smartphone, or a new travel destination, read and watch the reviews that present both sides of the story, the pros and the cons. All right, so I have to say that these three videos that I've just kind of showed you guys back to back is probably uh, my best work in terms of, uh, you know, how proud I am of doing this. I already told you that this has cost me so much money and so so much red tape that I will probably never be able to break through again. Um, and yet, I did it. I hope this gets more views simply because I think people really need to know when they're watching car reviews, what's really behind them. Now, I, I, I've gotten some comments in, in for those videos where people say, well, I knew this all along. Well, good. But now you also have some evidence. And I hope that's what you saw in these three videos. Um, don't forget to share them. I really do think that this is something that literally is is, is a public service that I've provided. Um, in, even though, of course, I make money uh, doing these videos. And a lot of you were kind enough to also subscribe to my channel. Um, you know, send me money on YouTube or Patreon and support my channel uh, that way. And I do appreciate it. So looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time and remember to stay charged.